titled Emily. It's a cabaret-style selection of short songs I composed to the words of my favorite poet. Emily Dickinson was born December 10, 1830. She is so inspiring to me because she defied everything she was expected to be. She received an education, never married, persevered through the pain of loss, lived for herself, and became one of the most well-known poets in history. Emily painted pictures with her words unlike anyone else ever had, and her words have transcended constraints of time to touch and inspire people to this day. The poems of Emily Dickinson have played a huge role in my own discovery of my emotions and channeling them into my passion for writing. To put it simply, I love her, and I think that each and every one of us can find a little piece of ourselves in the brilliant words she left behind. I hope you enjoy. The year is 1848. Emily Dickinson is now an 18-year-old woman who has discovered she has quite the knack for writing. Her thirst for knowledge has resulted in her attendance at Mount Holyoke Female Seminary, where she can further explore her reading and writing. As an educated woman in the 19th century, she spends most of her days gazing out of her window, gazing out of her window and writing. <laughs> It is now 1855 and Emily finally leaves Amherst on an excursion to Philadelphia. There she would meet a man named Charles Wadsworth, who was a preacher. He would not only teach her about God, but about her own self-worth. Charles would be one of the only friends that Emily would make in her lifetime. His friendship was invaluable to her, as depicted in her extensive writings and letters written for him. of dark poems. For a woman who experienced so little of the world, she experienced an exponential amount of loss. Each time Emily would grow close to another person, they would die. Her writings took a sharp turn, so much in fact that about a quarter of the poems she wrote centered around the theme of death. The year is now 1860, and Emily loses yet another friend.
experiencing so many losses, it could be expected that Emily would give up on her writing. But in such times of darkness, she found a way to encapsulate light through her words. Five years later, the year is now 1865, and Emily has become a complete recluse. She suffered too many losses during her young life, and refused to open her heart to the possibility of losing any more. She rarely accepted visitors, and when she did, it was only through a screen door, never face to face. Although it seemed to outsiders that she was broken, Emily had finally found peace within herself. This new life of solitude left Emily with peace and inspiration dedicating the rest of her life to her writing. The year is now 1886. Emily lived this last portion of her life wrapped up in herself and her writing. She became known as the Woman in White for the few appearances she did make in town, dressed in a pristine white gown, unfazed and unbothered. Emily learned through her own life that to live is to love, and that loving is often accompanied by suffering. This being said, Emily did not regret living a life full of love, not only for others, but also for herself. On May 15, 1886, Emily Dickinson died, leaving behind hundreds of poems that would one day become some of the most revered works of literature in old history. Dust thou down. 